ready to reassemble the rear axle and the components associated with it. Here's the axle. Here's the all ready to go. We got the axle oil seal. We have the axle shaft cone. We have the key that goes into the shaft. We have the bearing or the axle shaft cup. Also, we have the shims. There were five of them. We have the backing plate plus the braking assembly. The wheel cylinder is going to be replaced, obviously. We have a grease seal that goes with the grease retainer that attaches to the back of the backing plate. And last, that holds the wheel on is the wheel hub. At this stage, I'm ready to install the grease seal to the grease retainer that will be eventually attached to the brake backing plate as so with the seal in place. What I'm going to use to seat the seal is I have an oversized washer that, I, that fits perfectly over this. Then I'll be using a one and one eighth inch socket and a hammer and lightly tap it in so that it seats correctly and where it should be. As you can see, the seal has been seated properly. It should be flush with the top side or back side, depending upon which way you're looking at it, of the plate, the grease plate. And as you can see, uh, it came out pretty good. Next, I'll be installing the oil shaft oil seal. And I'll be using a washer to put over it and a one and one eighth socket to hold the washer in place and with a hammer tap it in and it will have to go all the way back. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a stop back here. And so it looks like I have to go maybe about a half inch, three quarters of an inch. Uh, to seat the seal against that stop. Next time you'll see uh, with the seal installed and what it should look like in position. As you can see the oil seal is in place and just to make sure it's far back as it can go up against the stop and the axle I have a, um, a curved pick that when I put it behind it from what I can feel, uh, there's no gaps back there. So basically, the seat is good. And now I'll be moving on to putting the cone and cup in um, along with the axle. Now I'm ready to install the bearing cone, the cup, and shims. As you can see, I've already greased the bearing and we'll be placing it inside of the cup. The diameters on the bearing are different on both sides and you will want to put the wider dimension or width on the taper side towards the axle. Once the cup has been placed on the bearing, it will slide right in and can be positioned against the axle. Now with the cone and cup in position, get the shims ready and position them against the axle. Make sure that they align with the holes on the axle so when you install the bolts they'll be correctly positioned. Slide the grease retainer in 
and now you're ready for completing the final steps of the installation. I have the oil shield in position followed by the shims with the wheel bearing and cup in position. I'm not, I'm not able to push them in by hand but what I was told is that if I do this and then put on the brake shield bolt them down I should be able to compress it so that everything will be seated snug and I shouldn't have a problem as I said normally with the brake shield I'm using these one inch bolts but because they're not long enough when installed with the plate and then a bolt I went ahead and I just purchased some extra bolts that I've already put for three in place they go in quite easily I'll put it like this and then I'll line this up hopefully quickly what I'll do is I'll put a washer on and then a nut on each one of them and I'll slowly torque them down and if what I was told correctly I should be able to seat the washer or the bearing in the cup now that I've swapped out the 3 8 inch bolts with the correct bolts from the original wheels I've installed the key I've started to put the reassembly together for the brake assembly and as you can see from the back here you'll see the shims have been compressed and it looks like hopefully uh, I shouldn't have any leaks or any concerns uh, once I put it all back together.